Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session in which we will solve a cash to actual simulation. My name is Maroon. I'm the VP of Operations and a CPA instructor at Farhat Lectures. And I'm more than excited to guide you through the simulation. First, before we look at the facts of the simulation, we need to know why a company would want to convert from a cash basis to an accrual basis. Well, there are many reasons, but those are just some examples. Uh, the first example is to comply with the bank requirements. When a company is applying for a loan, the bank may require the company to present its financials on an accrual basis of accounting. Company may need to comply with the IRS requirements. So a small sized company is increasing in size and the gross receipts exceed a certain amount. And this company is now required uh, to present its financial statements on an accrual basis. Final example is to meet external stakeholder expectations such as investors and lenders who may want to look at the financial statements uh, on an accrual basis to have um, a, uh, an in-depth understanding of the financial position and the net income of the company. Now let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Adam Loan Service Company maintains its books on a cash basis. However, the company recently borrowed 160,000 from a local bank and the bank requires Adam to provide annual financial statements prepared on an accrual basis. So basically we need to convert from the cash basis of accounting to the accrual basis to comply with the requirements of this loan. During 2023, the following cash flows were recorded. So we're gonna look at the cash flows uh, during the year 2023. We have cash collected for services to customers. So on the cash basis of accounting, the cash collected is the same as the revenue recorded and the cash paid. For expenses, it's going to be our expenses recorded for the period. And in this case, the net operating cash flow, it's going to be the same as our operating income on the cash basis of accounting. Would it be the same as the operating income on the accrual basis? No. Why? Because on the accrual basis of accounting, uh, the timing of the revenue recognition is different. It's not based on when we collected the cash, but when we satisfied our performance obligation by the delivering the goods to the customers, or in this case, performing the services to the customers. So the difference basically between the cash basis and the accrual basis of accounting is, the, is a timing difference. The same applies also for expenses. So on the cash basis, we're going to record our expenses when, when paid. And on the accrual basis, we're going to record our expenses when incurred, regardless of the timing of the payment. It can be before, it can be after, it doesn't matter. The, what matters is when, in which year, uh, the expenses have been incurred. So here we're going to need additional information uh, to solve our uh, simulation. And the additional information is related to accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, supplies, and accrued liabilities. We have the beginning balance uh, and the ending balances. In addition, 
we have some information about the bank loan that was dated September 30, 2023, and the interest rate 6% is due in one year. So here there's gonna be a difference between uh, the cash basis and the accrual basis, why? Because uh, the interest is due in 2024. So on the cash basis, the interest expense is gonna be recorded when paid in 2024. However, we have three months, three months of interest expense incurred during this year, and they are gonna be recorded on the accrual basis. Uh, finally, we have depreciation on the company's equipment is 16,000 for the year. Uh, regarding this depreciation, it's a non-cash expense and it should be recorded as an expense on the accrual basis of accounting. Uh, and it's gonna be uh, an adjustment because on the cash basis, there is no depreciation expense. Now I copied the information uh, on this worksheet. So we have here the cash flows for the year 2023, and we have the balance sheet accounts. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna solve the same through journal entries. Now, there are many ways uh, that you can solve this type of simulations. However, this is my preferred method, and I hope that you're gonna like it. So the first item we're gonna deal with is revenue. We need to figure out our revenue on the accrual basis of accounting. How we're gonna do that? Our starting point is our starting point is gonna be the cash collected for services to customers. Now this cash collected on the cash basis is our revenue for the year, which is 380,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and record this journal entry on the cash basis. Now on the accrual basis, cash is gonna be the same. What's gonna be different is we have here, accounts receivable are related to our revenue. So we're gonna deal with the change with the accounts receivable during the year which in this case is a decrease of 8,000. We had a beginning balance of 38. We have an ending balance of 30, which means our balance has decreased by 8,000. Now the question is, how do we record a decrease in an asset? So the accounts receivable uh, is an asset. How do we decrease it? We decrease it by crediting it. It gets decreased by a credit. 8,000, and the revenue recognized on the accrual basis of accounting, it's gonna be the difference between the cash and the accounts receivable, which is 372,000. So the general rule is, whenever we have an, in an increase in our accounts receivable, it's going to be an additional revenue. We debit the accounts receivable account and the revenue will be a plug figure. It's going to be more than the revenue recorded on the cash basis. Why? Because we accrued an additional revenue that was not collected during this year. However, it should be recorded because uh, it was earned. And like, like this, in this case, when we have a decrease in our accounts receivable, it's going to uh, decrease our revenue. Why? Because we have revenue that was earned in the prior year and collected in this year. So it's not this year's revenue on the accrual basis of accounting. So this is for revenue. The next item is salaries. Now regarding salaries, uh, it's very easy because we don't we don't ha have here any wages payable. We don't have any prepaid salaries. So our journal entry is gonna be the same on the uh, cash basis and on the accrual basis, which is a debit to salaries expense for 186,000 and credit to cash for 186,000. So here there is no difference in the timing of the recognition of the expense because it was incurred and paid in the same year. 
Next in line, we have the supplies. Regarding the supplies expense, we have also a balance sheet, related balance sheet account, which is the supplies asset. Now, the journal entry on the cash basis, it's going to be a debit to supplies expense for 31000 credit to cash for 31000 Cash is also going to be credited for 31000 on the accrual basis. However, here, we're going to need, need to deal with the increase in our supplies asset. So we have an increase of 200 from 1600 to 1800. Let's debit our supplies for 200. And the supplies expense is a black figure. It's the difference between the cash and the supplies asset. So why our uh, supplies expense is lower than uh, on the accrual basis? because we have $200 that were not incurred during the period. They are remain in our assets. They remain our assets at year end. So um, the fact that we paid for these supplies is irrelevant on the accrual basis. Our next item now is rent. Do we have any rent payable here or any prepaid rent? No, we don't. So, like salaries, our rent expense on the cash basis and on the accrual basis will be the same. So, the journal entry will be the same debit rent expense for 15,000 and credit to cash for 15,000. No difference. Uh, next, we have insurance. For the insurance, what do we have here? We have a prepaid insurance. So we're going to have different journal entry on the, on the accrual basis. On the cash basis, we have a debit to insurance expense for how much? For 12000 Credit cash for 12000 On the accrual basis, we have a credit to cash for 12000 so we have to deal with this increase in our prepaid insurance for 2,600. I'm gonna record it here. So how do we increase an asset? By debiting the asset. Pre debit to prepaid insurance for uh, 2,600. And our prepaid, ins prepaid uh, our insurance expense, not the prepaid, our insurance expense, it's going to be a plug figure. That's the difference between the cash paid and the prepaid insurance. Now, what makes sense here, so despite that we paid 2600 uh, of insurance, it's not an expense for this year. It's not incurred during this year. So the timing of recording the the timing of the recognition of the expense, it's not going to be in this year. It's going to be in the following year when we incur the expense. So whenever we have an increase in an asset, an increase in a prepaid, it's going to reduce our expenses. And the opposite is, is, is true. If we had a decrease in our prepaid insurance, this would have meant that um, a, a, an amount that was paid in the prior year has been incurred in this year and we need to increase our expenses on the accrual basis because we have a timing difference. The, uh, the expense would have been recorded on the cash basis during 2022 and the prepaid insurance uh, would need to be recorded in 2022 and the expense would be recorded in 2023. So also it would have been resulted in a timing difference, but the expense would have been in increased and not decreased in 2023. This is for the insurance. Uh, we still have the final item here, miscellaneous expenses. 
So on the cash basis, there's going to be a debit to miscellaneous expenses for 26,000 credit to cash for 26,000. Now the journal entry on the accrual basis, I have here accrued liabilities for miscellaneous expenses and it has increased from 3,000 to 4,000. This is an increase of 1,000. This is an increase of 1,000. Um, so what we're gonna do here, first of all, we're gonna credit cash for 26. And we gonna we have an increase in a liability. So how do we increase a liability? It's through a credit. So I'm gonna go ahead and credit my accrued liabilities account for 1,000. And I'm gonna debit my miscellaneous miscellaneous expenses account for the plug figure. The plug figure here is the sum of 26,000 and 1,000. So I can total my, I can balance my uh, total debit and total credit. So a liability gets increased by a credit and gets decreased by a debit. So whenever my liability increases, I'm gonna credit it. And this will lead to an increase in my expenses because I'm accruing more expenses. And if I had a decrease in my liabilities, that would have meant that um, although some liabilities were paid during this period, they were incurred in the prior period. So they are not uh, this period expenses on the accrual basis. And I would have decreased my expenses. So those are the items that we're dealing with in these tables. We still have um, an additional uh, item, which is depreciation expense, which can be also added to our uh, operating income on the accrual basis of accounting. So looking at our income statement here, uh, on the accrual basis of accounting, we have the summary. We have our service revenue, 372, seller's expense, 186, supplies expense, 30,800, rent expense, 15,000, insurance expense, 9,400, miscellaneous expense, 27,000, and we have the depreciation expense for 16,000. Those constitute our total operating expenses. We're gonna deduct them from our service revenue in order to arrive at our operating income. Now, the last item that we're gonna deal with is the interest expense. Now, the interest expense, remember, it's a non-operating expense. It's not part of our day-to-day -day activities. Now, this interest expense, it's not recorded on the cash basis because it's paid in 2024. However, we need to calculate the, por calculate the portion that's gonna be recorded in 2023 on the accrual basis, which is uh, the 160,000 of dollar borrowed multiplied by the 6% interest rate multiplied by the number of months that uh, the loan was outstanding during the year 2023, which is from October to December. We have October, November, December, three months, divided by 12, and we get our interest expense, which is 2,400. So finally, we're gonna deduct the 2,400 from our operating income, and we're gonna arrive our to our net income on the accrual basis, which is 85,400. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look for additional resources to prepare you for your CPA exam or accounting exam. Thank you for watching and happy studying.